I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Peter Kastandu of Souls Outreach Newlands West in Durban and it's my privilege again to bring you another message from the Word of God. Now when you look at uh, John, the, John the Baptist when he stepped on the scene, he gave some teachings paving the way for Jesus and it was very offensive to the people. And when Jesus steps on the scene, you'll find that he was so different, so very different. I'll give you some, a few illustrations and you can think about it. One day people were making the sacrifices, giving offerings in the church, and Jesus observed and he asked, who gave the most? The disciples were amazed when he said, the widow lady, who according to our knowledge gave the least, Jesus said she gave the most because she gave all she had. So you'll find that he was really cutting across the grain. Then he said, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you must learn to be a servant, servant of all. You start from the bottom. According to the customs of the day, according to the law, a Roman soldier can ask you to carry his bag, but you're only allowed to carry it for one mile. But Jesus said, after carrying it for one mile, ask him, can I carry it for another mile? Now it was amazing. He taught us to be hospitable. Then he said, we must bless those that curse us. Bless those that curse us. He said, we mustn't render evil with evil. He said, you heard it said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, if a person slaps you on the right, give him your left. Wow, absolutely amazing. Now, precious friends, one thing I want to leave with you right now is you'll find out even as we journey in life, people are quite satisfied of making the sacrifices. People are quite satisfied of giving the money. It's not a problem. People give and uh, you'll find that people take advantage of that. They keep asking for more and more and more. People give. And then you'll, you look at the word of God. The word of God teaches us not only to give our sacrifice. The word of God teaches us that we must become the sacrifice. We must lay our bodies on the altar. In other words, we must give Jesus our all. Not just one hour a week, not just our offerings. We need to give him our all, a totally surrendered life. And even as we give him our totally surrendered life, you'll find that thereafter there must be a change. So I'm going to take you through the word of God. I'm going to do a little bit of reading. And I want you to follow me in the word of God from the book of Romans chapter 12. The Bible says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Don't just make your sacrifice. You become the sacrifice by offering your body a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your reasonable act of worship. Now you know whenever people talk about worship, comes what comes to mind? Slow songs, praise, fast songs. But you'll find that Jesus said, offer your bodies. If your body is on the altar and if you sing your song, it makes a difference. He goes on to say, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So precious friends, when you look at the pattern of this world, the way the world thinks and the way the world does things, we as children of God should be different. So do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing and perfect will. So when you look at the word of God, God wants us to have a renewed mind, a transformed life. We must be different. Verses 3 says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. See what happens when you allow the word of God to penetrate your mind and thereafter you become word-based and you allow the word to work in you, 
you'll have a transformed life. You'll think differently. And look at some of the things that he's talking to us. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we are many from one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Now when you look at the body of Christ, there are some people who will confess to you, I love Jesus. Very good, you love Jesus. Point number two, do you love his word? And if you love his word, how often do you read your Bible? If you love Jesus, do you love his body? Do you forsake the fellowshipping of the saints together? Or you love to be in fellowship? Obviously, you're going to have some problems, some tests, some trials, some misunderstandings, some tribulations. But remember, with the transformed mind and the fruit of the spirit, that's when we can overcome and demonstrate the love of Christ. I'm going to go on a bit further. It says, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying. Now, when we talk about gifts, you'll find that sometimes people have a one-track mind. What comes to their mind? Preaching, praying for the sick, healing, deliverance. But look at what the word of God says. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, if it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Now you'll find that precious friends, when you look at the word of God, it says, God wants us to have a transformed a life and a renewed mind so that we not only become preachers and teachers and people who prophesy, there are so many other things that God wants us to do so that we can become part of the body. Let's go on a bit further. Love must be sincere. This is such a common word used everywhere. But you'll find that the word of God says, love must be sincere. <clears> Hate <throat> what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Now you'll find a precious friend with a transformed mind, with a renewed mind, a transformed life. These are some of the things that should be outstanding in our lives. Now listen to this a bit further. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. You know, precious friends, there's so much I can say to you about this one chapter that I'm going to deal with right now but we don't have the time seeing that I'm posting this message on the net but how many of y'all have as your friends begin to grow attain wealth become famous and thereafter you'll find out you lost your friends they no longer want to associate with you but Jesus tells us to be different we have to be different okay let's go on a bit further okay do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, 
it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord on the contrary now listen to this if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink in doing this you will leave burning coals on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good now precious friends i don't want to go on too long but what i want to say to you the beginning of that chapter says therefore i urge you brothers in view of god's mercies to offer your bodies as living sacrifices you know the sad part of it right now precious friends you'll find out people are quite satisfied if you contribute large sums of money people are quite satisfied if you make good contributions but they're not concerned about your prayer life they're not really concerned about your marriage some people can sit in front of the tv don't go to church and post the money online giving but i want to tell you something precious friends god wants you to put your body on the altar of sacrifice and you'll find out you know you can stay at home you don't have any trouble but once you start meeting and rubbing shoulders with people you're going to have problems and that is why he's teaching us we got to have the mind of christ we got to think differently we cannot be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world but we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind i told you earlier on do you love jesus if you love jesus do you love his word as his word become food to your souls so you'll find that every day you feed on the word of god because man does not live on bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the lord so remember if you love jesus you will love his word if you love jesus you will love the body of christ because you are part of the body of christ you can't separate yourself from the body of christ and if you love jesus you will love the fellowship you will love to go to church so i want to encourage you precious friends remember this transformation process it's not instant we growing daily we learning daily i remember a long time ago when i heard messages when i read I only concentrated on romans 1 and 2 be transformed by the renewing of your mind but thereafter you'll find out you must reach a practical dimension and this is when you read the whole of romans chapter 12 it takes us into the practical dimension and i want to encourage you precious friends during these trying times don't just be persuaded to give your money uh, sometimes i ask people you sing so well but how much time you spend in prayer before you sing your song how much time you spend in preaching sometimes people have become uh, i remember one person i heard preach so well i was totally amazed and i told him i'm so blessed with your message man hey what a powerful word now i expected him to say you know what i have studied the word i've been praying i've been asking god for a message and this is what i felt the lord impressed me to say you know when he couldn't take it anymore he was honest enough to tell me i got it from the internet so how many people are giving us information and not revelation so precious friend you can look like a brilliant preacher if you can preach sermons from the internet but the thing is do you love jesus do you love his word is his word working in your life to produce that transformation so i want to encourage you precious friends there's some work to be done sit and think about it when people hurt you when people mistreat you when all sorts of things seem to be happening when people even persecute you can you bless them and remember steven in the book of acts give us such a wonderful picture of going through persecution and yet saying father do not hold this against them remember joseph all the problems he went through he was he was brought down by his very own brothers they sold him as a slave but he came right to the top in egypt when he came right to the top he said them i forgive you you meant it for evil god turned it around for good 
And I like that scripture that comes to mind in Romans as well. I think it is Romans chapter, okay, nevertheless, Romans chapter 8, verses 31. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So I want to encourage you, precious friends. Don't just send your money. Don't just sing your songs. Don't just preach your sermons. Present your bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord. That puts a demand on your entire being. Thank you very much. May God richly bless you. Shall we bow for a time of prayer? <clears throat> Our most gracious God and eternal Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time that we can listen to your word. We humbly ask you, Lord, let your word do a work in us. Just like when we eat food and the food provides nourishment for our bodies, in like manner, let your word provide nourishment for our souls, that we may be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will think differently, we will act differently, we will live differently by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. We bring your people to you right now. We pray, God, that you would bless them. We pray, God, as they spend time with your word, you will help them. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Once again, dearly beloved, may God richly bless you. I pray you have a wonderful week in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus loves you. <laughs>